Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your April 16th to the 30th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. Now before I dive into the reading, I just want to say that these readings are going to focus on love, light, and positivity to build us up during this time of chaos instead of bringing us down. Because Lord knows that there's enough in this world right now to bring us down, to lower our energy vibration, to make us feel scared and vulnerable and all alone. These readings are designed through through the connection with spirit and your angels to build you up, focus on the positivity, focus on the bright side of life, and keep us moving forward. With that said, we're going to be starting with your spirit guide animal cards. These are also going to be your totem animals for this time. So if you come across these animals in the wild, or if you see an image of these animals, this is really your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on the shoulder of Virgo and saying, remember this message. So let's see what they have to say. Angel and spirit guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Oh, this one right here. Oh, I love it, the Groundhog Spirit. And this one right here. Oh, the butterfly spirit. That's beautiful. So the groundhog spirit says time to let go. And the butterfly spirit says transformation is beautiful. So it's time to let go as you embrace the beauty of transformation, which is a lovely way to start these readings. And now let's see what your chakra has to say for this time. Angel and spirit guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and spirit guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So you have spiritual awakening and love. Oh, that's gorgeous. So you are awakening spiritually towards embracing more love, more beauty, more positivity into your life. And now let's see what the tarot has to say. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Virgo, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Awesome. At the center of everything, we have the Eight of Swords. You're crowned by the Queen of Pentacles, which is you. You're an Earth Sign Energy Virgo. You're represented by the Pentacles in the Minor Arcana, and you're represented by the Hermit in the Major Arcana. Then we have the Three of Wands, the Hanged Man, the Sun at your root that is absolutely beautiful, the Five of Wands, and the Five of Swords. The repeat of the number five here shows that whatever conflicts you have coming in your life, and you will have a couple of conflicts with you know, mental perception of things, the way you're thinking about them, the way that they're com kind of coming at you, and your passion, the way you want to move forward in what you envision for your life. These things are going to be resolved rather easily, maybe not as easily as you would like them to be, but they are going to come to a rather speedy conclusion. These cards are also, the repeat of the number five, is also symbolizing freedom. You need freedom in your life. Again, you have another five, so now you have three five. So this is a divine message for this time. Then you have the Emperor, a strong Aries presence, a time frame of March 21st to April 19th. And then you have the Four of Pentacles. Okay. Oh, how interesting. Okay, so we're starting off with the Groundhog Spirit and the butterfly spirit. The groundhog spirit says time to let go. It's time to let go of the things that cannot be controlled. And during this time, especially during this chaos, during this fear, during this apprehension, we want to hold on. And so here, with it being time to let go, it's kind of like look at what you can control. Look at what you do have power over and stop beating yourself up over what you don't. Because as you let go of what needs to be let go, you really embrace your heart and you start speaking your heart's truth. This transforms you. 
this transforms you. It transforms you into something beautiful. It transforms you towards beauty, towards what your heart desires, and towards where you want to be. And this transformation is beautiful for you. Also, what I love about butterflies is that not only do they show transformation, okay, you have this little caterpillar, which doesn't look like much, becoming this beautiful butterfly, but that butterflies, as being a jewel upon the wind, you know, is also an insect that is attracted to carrion, is attracted to dead things. So they also have this darker side that people don't highlight and don't usually know about. So here with light, it, with life and with light in and of itself, there's this darker side that we don't look at. It's kind of like we would never enjoy the light if we just had the sun beating down on us all the time, or we had this white, stark space all the time. It would become too much, you know? And so here it's looking at the shadows of things. It's remembering that you need that coolness of, not, of light, of light, of night, to be able to embrace the brightness of the day. And so you're having this harmony come together with your perception and what you desire. And this is leading you towards your crown chakra, towards a spiritual awakening, towards a sense of really letting your mind embrace what you desire, how you want to move forward, and where it is that you want to be within your life. And as you do so, you're looking at your heart more so than ever before, Virgo. You need to look at your heart. Your heart is very important to you. You're one of the signs as you're, you know, depicted by, yeah, by the hermit card in the major arcana, you're one of the signs that needs to turn inward, that needs to kind of step back from everybody, from the chaos of it all and really connect with yourself. And when you connect with yourself, you connect with your heart because we are emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we need to connect with our hearts, our souls, ourselves, the way that we emotionally want to move forward and what makes us feel better about ourselves, but also really highlighting the things in our lives that make us feel worse, that make us feel guilt, that make us feel shame, you know? And so here with the heart, chakra coming into play and with your heart, with love being at your center, it's like focus on the things you love. And if there are things that need to be healed, you know, look at them and look at them with honesty of self. So as you do that, there is the sense of what you love caged in by your mind. And that's so interesting because this is 18. So the eight just really popped out of me. And then you have the eight of swords. So there's something about taking something a little bit too seriously. It's kind of like really focusing on it a bit too much. So as you're focusing on it too much, you're going to try and reason it out. Sometimes emotionally, if you're focusing on things emotionally, you can't reason them out. They just are. And that's really hard because a lot of times we want answers. We want distinct, you know, A equals B equals C, and we can move forward. We can move forward towards what we desire, towards what we want, and towards where we want to be within our lives. And with the Eight of Swords, this right here at the heart, this can derail your whole time because this is doubt. This is fear. This is being overwhelmed. This is questioning whether you can move forward. This is looking at what you desire and saying, oh, I'm not worthy of it. I can never get there. You know, what made me think that this could be part of my life, my truth, myself? But you have the emperor right here. And the emperor is strength and determination. It is focus. And you also have the repeat of the number four. And this is talking about taking care of yourself. Four is for, you know, the full four walls of the house, your body, which houses your soul. Take care of you. Do not let doubt and fear hold you back. Because whenever I look at the emperor, he always makes me think of David in the Old Testament. David in the Old Testament, you know, King David, he was not a perfect man, but he was a very good man. He made a lot of mistakes and he paid for them. He repented for them. He searched for goodness. He searched for truth within his life. And he tried to move forward as best he could once he realized the error of his ways. And I really see that as us as human beings. We're not perfect. We don't do everything we know to be right all the time. And sometimes we get frustrated. We get angry. Or we try to cut corners. And so here it's saying, understand your humanity. And understand that by embracing your humanity, it doesn't mean, oh, I can do whatever I want and then, you know, just say sorry for it later. It means that I strive to be better each and every day, to claim the throne for which I sit on, to claim the power which guides me, which ignites me, which moves me forward. And as I do so, I claim my truth. I move forward in my truth. I move forward in my passion. And as you are doing this, you are looking at what you want. Now, it can also be that you're having a little bit of trouble with an Aries energy or with somebody who is very 
passionate, very passionate. It could be a fire sign energy, but it's somebody who's very passionate and who can try and just kind of like sweep in and be like, okay, we have to move this way. We have to move forward. We have to go like this. We have to go like that. During this time, you're not going to do really well, well with have tos. No, Virgo, you're going to want a calm and gentle approach. You're going to want to step back and see things, kind of take them in, digest them, and then move forward with strength and conviction of spirit. That is going to be your very best plan. You also need to not let doubt take over. This is going to be one of the recurring themes that you see during this time where you're going to want to move forward one way and then doubt and fear and apprehension come into play and you're going to think, I can't do this. I can't move forward this way. I don't know how to you know, embrace what I want or move forward the way that I want to. And this questioning comes in, this apprehension comes in. And this is what moves you to really embracing the Queen of Pentacles mentality because this is you being prosperous. This is you being bountiful. This is people turning towards you, Virgo, and saying, wow, how do you have it all together? And it's because you're holding things close to the chest. With the queens, I see them as the directors behind the scenes. They don't need to be center stage. As you are looking forward towards your future, excuse me, excuse me, you will be center stage more. You'll be looking at things, you'll be looking at the way people perceive you, or you'll be looking at the way you present yourself. But right now, in this present moment, you are turning inward and you are seeing how you can ignite your passions, how you can plant your seeds to move you forward in the direction that you want. And you are going to run up against these mental roadblocks, these things that make you think, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Or, or you know what, I can't do that until I have everything worked out just right. Or, oh, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed here, so I'm just going to set that aside. You know, this is really saying, no, look at it. Look at what you desire. Look at what you want. Look at the passion that guides you forward. Plant the seeds because you are reaping the harvest. And as you plant the seeds, the intentions, you are also going to see other joys that you have planted, other determinations that you have gone after starting to bear fruit. And what you're doing now is really your mind is on money. It's on, you know, what you value as much as money. And of course that makes sense, especially during a time where jobs have been like postponed, people are being furloughed, you know, life is getting messy. And so here with the queen of pentacles, it's like, you're looking at your prosperity. You're holding on to your prosperity. You have a tremendous, tremendously valuable gifts and you, you kind of know it. At times, you can see yourself as tremendously valuable without being egotistical, but you are also looking at things like, how can I improve myself? How can I move forward? And at times, you're going to feel almost stuck out in the cold, looking in at prosperity instead of being a part of it. Now, the warning here is also for somebody who comes into your life who is kind of like Nero, kind of can tell everybody else what to do and can give orders, but plays their fiddle as Rome burns, doesn't care about the hardships they're putting you through, doesn't care about the disappointments, just cares about themselves. And because you are a people pleaser and you are Virgo, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. You like to take care of everyone. You like to, you know, take the weight of the world on your shoulder and make it better because you do have answers. And here, you cannot make this person's world better. You can't. If they are playing the Nero the Nero role, there we go, a little bit of a tongue tie. If they're playing that role, they have to play it out and you have to step back because that's the way you're going to be able to move forward with the most determination of self, with the greatest power of prosperity and not feel like you're on the outside looking in because there's going to be a sense and there's going to be times where you feel like a pauper, where you feel like a beggar and you're not, you're not a beggar, you're not a pauper. You are a person who is gathering up knowledge, who is gathering up prosperity, and who is seeing the way to open up the kingdom of heaven to themselves, to open up the kingdom of prosperity and bounty and beauty, and to walk through those doors and say, I deserve to be here. And this comes with a shift of attitude towards self. This comes when you have passed a karmic hurdle is what I'm seeing here. And when you have addressed the inner conflict that is, that is chafing you, that is holding you back. And then here with the sun, I mean, you really do have blessings all around. And with the sun right here, well, the sun is represented as this rose. And what I love about this depiction is, yes, you have the children playing, so there's this innocence and you have the butterflies and the flowers around them. So there's this beauty and it's also talking about transformation. And around the rose is all the zodiac signs. So it's showing a year cycle, okay, most definitely. But also roses represent love. 
but the rose thorns are actually astoundingly poisonous and you can get very sick. I believe one can almost die or can die from the poison of the roses. So it's kind of like the beauty of the butterfly. There's an underlying darkness to it. And so here, as you are embracing your love, your joy, your prosperity, your beauty, your success, as you are walking in the sunlight, there is also going to be these bittersweet times or these times where you're looking at things and you're saying, well, if I'm walking in the sun and if the sun's around me, why is it still hard? Why am I still overwhelmed? Why does it still feel like people are taking me by eyes? When people see the light of the sun shining brightly within you and around you, people think, there's a person who's happy. I'm never going to be happy. I'm not going to have that same happiness. And so with the sun, it also comes with people kind of wishing you ill at times. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the golden light of the universe. Make sure you see your angels with their wings wrapped around you because I can assure you, your angels want you to succeed and are wanting you to, to, to transform. And as you embrace this, you have the four of pentacles. I see the four of pentacles as personally as a... It is the emotional vampire card. And if you look right here, which is what I looked at when I put the cards down and I just saw a skull and I was like, oh my gosh, but this key right here, if you hold it upside down, I don't know if you can see it. It's a skull head. And I was like, oh my goodness, here's this little sweet child burying their prosperity and the key has a skull on top. So it's like, are you burying your prosperity for a day that will never come? Are you using your gold now? Are you using your blessings, your gifts now? Because that's what it's saying to do. It's saying to look at you and to look at what you desire and, you know, to heck with everybody who wishes you ill. But everybody is always going to wish you ill. And I don't mean everybody as in everybody in the world. I mean just the naysayers, the, the haters, the people who want to see you brought down. People, those voices are always going to be louder in your head than the voices of those people who actually believe in you. And people are always going to wish each other well, Ill, Ill will, you know, and I think it's, it's funny that people say, oh, you know, we're supposed to support each other and love each other and build each other up. Yes, but kind of like, like people haven't been, you know, wanting to see other people fail since the beginning of time. Like there wasn't jealousy. Look at Cain and Abel. I mean, in the Bible, not to get religious on people, but you know, come on, people love to see a good fall story. And so here it's like, of course, people are going to wish you ill because that's who they are. And if that's where they are in their journey, that's the best they can do. And if that's their best, why do you want them in your life? If that's their best, if what they're giving is the best that they can possibly give, why have them there? And so here, don't bury your gifts. Don't bury your prosperity. Show them proudly. And for all the negativity that's coming around, See yourself surrounded by the golden light of the universe and then see your angels taking their swords, flaming, twirling swords, and cutting through that whole energy of the universe, severing all that golden light around you. Because as they sever the golden light, they also sever the strands of corruption. And the strands of corruption that are severed will not regrow, but the golden light will instantaneously, more pure or purer and better than before. And it leads you to facing conflicts from within. It leads you to looking at doubts and fears and the sense of being overwhelmed and saying, how do I move forward? And where is it that I want to be? It can be external conflicts also. It can be getting into arguments with people or somebody said something and now you're looking at things that you thought you were blessed or you thought your life was moving forward this way and now you're questioning it. And so here with the five of wands, it's like, let the chaos go. I like to say, and something I've been practicing, especially with, you know, quarantining and everything like that. Will I remember this five years from now? I mean, quarantining, yes, this, was, this is like a story for the grandkids, right? But will I remember this five years from now when I'm getting into a tiff with somebody? Or, you know, I'm fighting over, you know, words that were said or numbers. You know, it's not five years, it was six or, you know, some such nonsense, nonsense as that. Does it matter? Does it matter? It matters at that moment because you're annoyed at the person, but does it actually matter? And if the answer is no, step back from it. Step back from it and look at what you want to passionately move you forward towards greatness because your perception is changing. What you are looking at, what you are taking in, the hanged man is all about transformation, 
okay? It's all about your vo- viewpoint being transformed. But here he's hanging by his leg, by a serpent. Serpents are also about transformation. They can shed their skin, right? But serpents were also seen before Judeo-Christian times as, as powers, powerful messengers of spiritual knowledge because they could transform, because they sh- could shed their skin, because they, you know, were so flexible, because they could climb, they could be on the ground, you know, everything like that. And so here you are embracing that knowledge and you are being transformed by knowledge. And it can be that you are being drawn more and more towards hidden knowledge, hidden secrets, you know, beautiful happenings that you might not feel comfortable sharing with everybody because people might sit there and go, oh, okay, that's a little odd, or, oh, you know, I'm not interested in that. Keep on following your instincts, your intuition during this time, Virgo, because you're transforming yourself. You're looking at things differently, and you're looking at yourself differently. As you do so, you're claiming your passion and your power. As you do so, you're looking at your throne, and you're saying, this is what I desire for my life, and I'm not hiding my gifts away anymore. This is a time where karmic lessons are being brought to the surface with the five of swords it's like okay I have a battle and I've won the battle am I going to feel guilty about it the answer is you could you could feel guilty about it because the traditional reading of the five of swords it's like poor sportsmanship you could sit there and say I was better prepared for this I was better trained I you know just was luckier at this moment but isn't that what winning is all about taking those lessons and taking them more seriously, being better trained for a situation, looking at things in a certain way. But I also see the Five of Swords as a sense of stand your ground. Because in medieval times, if you were to tell somebody, oh, I feel really bad for letting that person live after we got into a skirmish, or I feel really bad for taking their swords after, after we fought, you know, and I won, they would think you were an absolute raving loon. They really would. They would sit there and look at you and said, you let them win? Now there's going to be a blood feud. I mean, not win. You let them walk away? Now there's going to be a blood feud. You know, you didn't take everything that you possibly could? What are you, being a fool? You know, it's how morality has changed. And my gosh, has it changed over the centuries? So here, it's standing your ground. It's taking what is rightfully yours. It's not being cruel or vindictive or mean or, you know, harsh with things. It is simply embracing your worth. And karmically, what is happening, and it can be karmically, it can be through your DNA line. Okay, you might be sitting there and saying, my family is always like this, or this always happens to us. You are facing things that you have inherited, again, either through your DNA or through your karma. And as you're you're facing these inherited problems, you're going to face them with more ferocity, but also with a little bit more despair. It's like, oh my gosh, not this again. And you might be sitting there and saying, well, I've never faced this before. What do I mean? Not this again. You know, that doesn't make any sense. And so here with your passion, your power, your purpose, you are facing what needs to be faced and you are claiming your winnings. And yes, you might have to face it again down the road because your life might be, your life theme might be to face this problem again and again until you don't flinch or until this life is done. And so as you are looking at your passion, as you are looking at your your power, look at your wins and look at your future. Look at what you have fought for and fought through to get to where you are now. And then you will see new ships on the horizon. Then you will see new ways to move forward, but also new ways to protect yourself. New ideas to move you and guide you towards your greater purpose, towards your greater power. As you do this, I just think of the story of the prince and the pauper. It's kind of like you change roles. And it can be that what you thought was undeniably strong has a flaw to it, has a weakness to it. And what you thought was weak or what you thought was your weakness winds up being one of your greatest strengths at this time. So be prepared for things to be kind of like topsy-turvy and for you to sit there and be like, oh my goodness, you know, are you kidding me? But there's a power to you and you're not seeing it. And that's what has to change. 
It does. It has to, Virgo. Because your sun shines bright. It's your roots. Your roots have the sun beating down on them. Your roots, and not in the way that it scorches the life out of them, in the way that it nourishes, it grows. You're planting deeply of your success, but you are not hiding away your power. That's it. You cannot hide away your gifts. Don't do that. But plant your prosperity. Plant your seeds of prosperity. And move deeply towards what you desire because things are changing. And if you don't embrace this change, you will have a battle within yourself that makes this time period feel almost like a nightmare. But if you embrace this change within you, if you excuse me, embrace your spiritual awakening and your heart's truth, this time will become one of the most powerful awakenings you have been through. Your subconscious message, nine of cups, prosperity, blessings, bounty. You have the lily behind you. This is majesty and purity. Majesty and purity guide you to success and bounty and beauty. People can see the radiance of your passion. You have to be able to see it too. And that can take time and work. For you to see the gifts that other people already see within you. And you're not going to think of them as gifts. You're going to say, yes, that's the way it has to be. Or no, I just did that because I had to. You didn't have to. You could have, you know, curled up in a little ball and hid away. You're not. And that's one of your greatest gifts, Virgo. Then you have the, again, the crown presence. But this is the I am presence. What you say you are, you are. I am powerful. I am strong. I am beautiful. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am bounty. I am love. I am rich. And then the words that you say, I am too. And you feel resistance there. Where you say, I am beautiful. And you think, oh yeah, but you haven't seen my nose. You know, no, come on. Come on, look at Liza Minnelli. Come on. You could be whomever it is that you want to be. And you can be you. And say, this is me. And if you say it with pride, and you say it with dignity, okay, and if you stand up straight and tall and hold your head up high, people will believe it. I swear to you, if... In the world, everybody was six foot something, okay, and skinny as a rail. Our supermodels would be little round balls of people. And we would go, oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? Because it's different. And confidence is different. Arrogance, there's plenty of arrogance in the world. There's plenty of, I'll show you how great I am. You know, there's plenty of, I will pretend to be great. But really inside, I'm, I'm terrified. But if you walk with, I am confident... I am proud of myself. I am proud of what I've accomplished. Man, you've just changed the whole entire game. And your subconscious spirit animal message is the chameleon spirit, which plays right in line with the I am presence, which plays off of the blessings and the beauty of the nine of cups. The chameleon spirit says, act as if. As if. Act as if you are the person you want to be. Act as if you are living your dreams and you are molding and creating them. And there are going to be times, believe me, I know, there are going to be times where you are exhausted and overwhelmed and looking at everything and thinking, this is not my paradise. This is not my dream. This is not my happy space. And then step back and say, okay, right now, it might be like shoveling manure but I'm getting the roses. I'm getting that beautiful garden of my existence and of my passion. And then you've just rewritten the whole entire scenario. Act as if, Virgo, you are living your dreams and you are embracing your highest self. All right, Virgo, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. And I love you all. Bye. Oh, and I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. Stay safe. Love you guys.